how much do we know about the story of Kong's parents and how they ended up on Skull Island? The history of the great apes as a species dates all the way back to the earliest days of the planet, back when the primordial Earth was still dominated by the Titans. We know that they had ancient jurisdiction over the Hollow Earth, and that their rivalry with the Gojira nearly eradicated both species entirely. But their migration to Skull Island is one of the most overlooked, yet important events in the great apes' history. So what do we know about Kong's parents and the earliest days of Kong's life? Well, today, Heralds of the Titans, let's dive into that question. We'll mostly be covering what we know in the MonsterVerse to be true, but we will be sure to mention some of the extended lore as well. In the comic series Kong of Skull Island, which is not canon to the mainline MonsterVerse, the Kong were actually brought to Skull Island rather than migrating there naturally. They were brought over by Tagu and the Atu people, and were selectively bred and domesticated for the people of Skull Island. This led to a drastic increase in their size and respective strengths, as each new generation of Kong was bred to be bigger and stronger than the previous. In the MonsterVerse, they weren't necessarily selectively bred, but there is evidence to suggest that the ecosystem of Skull Island did give way to larger apes over the years. As far as the MonsterVerse continuity is concerned, we get the clearest look at Kong's parents in Skull Island Birth of Kong novel, and a few passing mentions and hints in the mainline MonsterVerse films. In the flash back sequences from the birth of Kong, we see that Kong's parents were already present on Skull Island, alongside several other members of the Titanus Kong. As of now, there isn't a canonical explanation as to how the great apes got to Skull Island, but there are a few theories that are worth considering. One such idea has to do with the steam vents throughout Skull Island that the Skull Crawlers used to migrate, and some fans propose that the Kong, back in the distant past, used these same vents to migrate from Skull Island after the First Titan War. The idea goes even further and suggests that these refugees parted ways with the rest of the survivors who remained behind under the leadership of the Scar King. But again, this is speculative as of right now and has not been confirmed. Whatever the official explanation may be, at some point in the distant past, Skull Island was home to a thriving population of great apes, though they were locked in constant warfare against the Skull Crawlers who sought the island for themselves. Led by the largest of them, the Skull Devil, the Skull Crawlers terrorized the great ape population. And year by year, the apes are systematically defeated, and by the time the Iwi tribe arrived on Skull Island, Kong's parents are the only two remaining survivors of the great apes. The Birth of Kong story details the moment when the Iwi arrived on the island, and one of the first things they see is the sight of Kong's father, who is holding a dead skull crawler in his hands. At his feet lie the remains of several dead skull crawlers, though he and his mate appear to be the last two great apes by this point in time, and this is where they begin to worship the great apes as their protectors, which would eventually result in them worshipping Kong as their guardian. The skull crawlers, though, were not pleased with this new species of humans, and began to terrorize all of them as well, immediately killing off as many of the Iwi as they could manage. This meant that they unofficially fell under the protection of Kong's parents, as they were the only ones actively pitting any resistance against the skull crawlers on the entire island. Many of Kong's father's thoughts and histories were interpreted by Monarch and the mythographer Walter Riccio, who described their situation as hopeless even before the birth of Kong. As an expert on the great apes, Riccio acted as a mouthpiece for the state of affairs of Skull Island, and the conditions were dire, even all those years before the coming of Kong. The reign of the Skull Crawlers seemed to be an inevitability, and although Kong's father understood this, he was motivated by a strong protective instinct of the Iwi people and his family. Despite watching his friends systematically die out one by one, he and Kong's mother continued to fight the Skull Crawler War. He refused to quit despite years of battle damage, which eventually resulted in him losing an eye. The Iwi did their best to form a colony on the island under the protection of the Great Apes, though the Skull Devil proved to be more violent and dangerous than any of the low-level Skull Crawlers. Kong's mother was equally as protective of not just her mate, but the Iwi tribe as well. And when she had Kong, it was in the midst of a battle against the endless barrage of Skull Crawlers. No matter how many the Great Apes killed, their numbers never seemed to cease. And so, she decided to hide away her infant son in a cave, while she and his father continued the fight. In Skull Island, we can see that Kong's father has an injury to the side of his head, and it's implied that this was the killing blow which finally brought him down at the hands of the Skull Devil. 
The weakness of the great ape was not in their strength, but in the sheer number of the skull crawlers that were eventually able to swarm and overwhelm them. And in the novel, it is revealed that one of Kong's earliest memories is his escaping the cave and discovering the remains of his parents. This meant that Kong inherited the responsibility of protecting the Iwi almost as soon as he was born. And the Iwi legend claims that if Kong was ever to die, then the Skull Devil would return and consume the rest of the tribe. This particular detail is interesting though, as it seems to imply that the Skull Devil went into hiding or in some way disappeared when Kong rose to power. And for some reason or another, the Iwi believed that Kong was keeping him at bay. It's interesting to note, however, that Kong seems to have had much more success than any of his predecessors when it comes to keeping the skull crawlers in line. While his parents fought for years upon years, as did Kong, they seem to be severely more weathered than Kong ever gets. This isn't to say that he doesn't struggle against the skull crawlers, as he very much does. But these skull crawlers were able to wipe out the great ape colony before Kong yet they have had Kong's entire life to kill him and they have never succeeded. Since birth, he has been alone and has grown up without reinforcements, which should have made him a prime target for execution. Yet the skull crawlers have still been unable to get the job done. This is why Kong is regarded as the alpha among the great apes and the greatest rival to the Scar King. He has been continually proven as the strongest of all of them even from adolescence, proven to defeat the Skull Crawlers and the Skull Devil as a teen in Kong Skull Island. And from childhood, Kong has fought off these beasts, and this was all before standing toe-to-toe -to -toe against Godzilla himself. Kong's reputation clearly carries something very heavy with it, and it's clear that Kong's parents and the colony that made their way to Skull Island actually did oppose the Scar King, making it essentially part of Kong's birthright that he would eventually face down against the Scar King and be victorious. He has been hardened for years upon years of battle with the Skull Crawlers that has prepared him for this moment, where he is no longer Kong, where he is truly King Kong, King of the apes and one of the most dangerous alpha titans in existence. His intelligence, his stamina, how battle-hardened he has become. Kong is nothing to trifle with. But anyway, my friends, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on how Kong grew to be so powerful and the death of his parents? Is there any trait in particular that sets Kong apart from his predecessors? And if so, why do you think Kong was able to survive so much more effectively than the entire colony of great apes that came before him? As always, my friends, thank you so much for visiting the channel today. Atomic breath that subscribe button and have a great one.